Hey everybody, it's Chris, and today we're looking at Otter Creek Disc Golf Course in Brandenburg, Kentucky on its 44th anniversary, July 18th, 1978 is the install date. There are actually 27 holes now, but the original 18 are the ones designed by Ed, so that's what I'm taking a look at. Hole 1, 309 feet, downhill. Really, if you can hit this gap on the right and fade, you've got a chance of getting there. You just have to avoid all those branches high, and I caught some of the last ones to come up just a little bit short, uh, but pretty easy clean up there. What I really liked about this course is that it was, you could tell there were shot designs. Um, as you can see, this is a big turnover. If you've got a forehand, you're going to be able to use it quite a bit here. I don't have a forehand, so I did these drifting backhands with the patrol. But again, it's shot shaping. And so I did pull out a bite a few times. You'll see that come up fairly soon. I don't remember which hole. Um, just so I could have that super class style feel of throwing discs more like they would have in that era. This one was just a simple uphill hyzer. Again, that was a putter. Again, here's perfect forehand hole, if I have a forehand. Uh, instead, I'm throwing a flex backhand with a culprit. Um, maybe I should have just tried the forehand anyway, but this worked out pretty well. Here's my first big mistake of the day. I definitely would play this hole differently than I did. I would just throw like a straight mid up the gut here on the right side of that tree which I was actually trying to do with the escape, I just misfired. Um, I think it could get there. I probably disked up too much and just didn't hit the gap. Cost me a three, but still a fun hole to play. This is one I look forward to playing again someday. Hole six was almost my next big mistake. As you can see here, I got lucky and hit the local route. That was not on purpose, but it got me inside the circle, so I took it. And then I missed the putt. Still a fun hole. I actually threw it a couple more times just down the gap, but I like the fact that I missed on the first one and still got inside the circle, so I used it. Hole 7, again, is a, just a really nice drifting annie. You'll see the disc flare there right in the middle of the picture. Once again, forehand friendly, I think, um, but that drifting patrol made it there, so worked out for me this time. Hole 8 basket's pretty much straight ahead up this gap. I put hyzer on this instead of throwing it flat, and that's going to cause me to kick way left. If it hadn't drifted, I think I would have ended up way past the basket. This one played shorter than the 305, I thought. Um, in fact, I put a mid past the spot where I'm at in this picture in the woods over there, and that was not thrown nearly as hard. Hole 9 is a fading hyzer shot. Really, you're just trying to push that second tree and get the disc to fade forward which is why I threw the judge here. The culprit is a naturally overstable disc that wants to fade. What I wanted out of the judge was something that was going to glide more as it faded. And as you can see, the judge is just going to be farther toward the basket because of that. Because it's more understable, it's going to drift on its fade as opposed to just coming down to the ground like the culprit wants to. Hole 10 is actually very similar in play style to hole 9. Again, it's just a hyzer. This is, once again, aspect of shot shaping. As you can see the culprit gets down there, I actually overthrew it because of the downhill. And here's that bite that I promised. Um, this is just a, a wider diameter disc. It's designed for dogs uh, or catch style throw as you can see. Just shaping that hyzer for it drifted down pretty to pin high. It was actually a little short of target but it did end up pin high. Hole 11 I thought was one of the easiest holes in the course and I did this. Yep hit the first bushes instead of throwing it right up the gap. I thought for sure I was going to miss this putt and when it came out of my hand, but for some reason the basket was forgiving on that one. So, sometimes it evens out. Here's another fun shape. Uh, just hit the gap, let something float. The basket's just to the left of that tree down there that I just hit, and you're going to see where that blue disc, blue disc ends up. But again, here's that more super style or super class style disc, although the bite is not super class, more of that style. The disc that just floats on the line you put it on. And this one just demanded stay under the branch and you'll get there. Hole 13 is one of my favorite holes in the course, even though I didn't play it well. Uh, again, this is something that maybe with a forehand would be easier, something with like a drifting hyzer forehand shot. Um, or what I really need to do with that patrol was get it higher and actually a sharper cut to get into that gap. Instead, I think I came up short and cut world a little bit. But I really like the shape of this one. I look forward to playing it again. I was playing it blind, so I wasn't really sure what to do. Uh, so made it fun. Here my camera went a little bit uh, 
askew. You see the disc disappears after hitting that first gap. It actually does bounce up right next to the basket. I never saw that guy while I was throwing and felt terrible when I saw this video and realized I basically threw on him. So that's my brother's first run truth. That's why I flashed it there. This means a lot to me. Came out of his bag. Glimmerex truth, a little more overstable than regular truth. Um, you can just see I wanted the fade here because the basket is off to the left and it does skip up pretty close. I actually missed my line. I wanted it to be a little bit tighter, uh, but it got close enough. Worked out. Mainly because it flared. Hole 16, just straightforward with a putter again. This one's going to drift just a little bit right instead of staying on target, but it gets up into the, or into the putting surface here, the raised surface. Hole 17 is just another hyzer fade shot. So again, that more overstable truth. And I thought this shot was perfect right up until that spot where it hits a tree, that little tiny tree, and kicks backwards. A um, little bit longer putt than I expected, but again, I like the shape of this throw, so... I mean, I'm a right-hand backhand thrower, so, you know, fading shots are always good. And the last hole, just a simple turnover. I turned it over too hard. You can see it was just too sharp. Needed to stay a little bit flatter. Uh, so I ended up pretty far right. That was the final of the 18. My battery was actually almost dead as I took this can or this video, so I don't have the new 9 on here. But that was the important part anyway, the, des the original design by Steady Ed. I really encourage anybody to come out here. You can work on your shop shaping with putters, mids, or some old super class style discs. So if you're in Brandenburg, Kentucky, give this course a shot. You know you want to play a Steady Ed course anyway, and I encourage this one. Thanks for watching.